Hello everybody, in this lesson you will get a free script example to copy and paste plus a video guide on the programming logic involved to accomplish this task. And the task is checking a user's name in your sign up form as they're filling the form out in real time. So if I type in the name Derek or something like that and I move my mouse away to go and maybe fill out another field or interact with anything else on the page it says Derek is okay in real time and nothing has to refresh but since the name Adam is already in the database and if I tried to use that name it'll say Adam is taken or any other name that's already taken in your database and I also threw in a couple of extras for you guys in this tutorial we're gonna be also learning how to check and see if the username starts with a number so say something like that first character must be a letter so you can let them know that you're not going to accept their username if it starts with a number a lot of sites don't let their users name start with a number so if they do something like that it's fine as long as it doesn't start with a number and I'm also going to show you how if it's too short say something like 4 to 20 characters please or 4 to however many characters you want it to be in between you know what I'm saying just put those two numbers here and I'll show you in PHP how we're checking for that and you can also limit this field so it can only put in like 15, 16 characters or whatever you want. So you're gonna learn all that stuff, okay? Let's go. Okay, since we already discussed how it works and you already saw that it works and actually that was live on my server at worldofwebcraft.com where I was tapping into the actual database there and checking usernames. And this is the exact script I was using and I'm going to give this script to you guys so you can copy and paste it. And what there is is some PHP on top, there's some JavaScript here in the head tag section, and then in the body section we have an input text field here, which I'll explain to you, and then a span tag that has an ID of username status. So what I'll do is explain the HTML very quickly first because there's not much going on there, and then I'll explain the JavaScript that's sitting here, and then we'll finally discuss the PHP that's up top because really that's how the application will flow. The user interacts with your HTML here. JavaScript picks up the event which is on blur and then JavaScript then posts to PHP which is up top here. So we'll tackle it in that order because it makes good sense too. Okay, let's take a close look at these HTML lines which is only two HTML lines in my body tag here. The first one is an input type text field for gathering the username which you would have in your form. Now we've given this input field a name attribute and an ID attribute with the value of uname. And the ID attribute is how we will be getting the value of what they typed into the field in JavaScript. We'll be attaining the value using this ID. Now the on blur event, what happens on the on blur event is that's when the user's mouse, after they're typing in, the cursor's flashing in the field and they've typed in whatever, when their mouse leaves that field and interacts with something else on the page that's when the on blur event will fire off and what we have it set to do here is execute a function called check username which is a javascript function sitting in this javascript area here i'm going to show you that function in just a second and then the last attribute is the max length so they can only type in fifteen characters into my field now this span tag has an id of username status and what this is just sitting here waiting, it kind of waits right next to the form field like you saw in the example in the demo in the beginning. It waits right next to the form field and it gets updated with text when your JavaScript is running. And it happens in real time without a page refreshing. While JavaScript is doing certain things, it can update to this span tag, any kind of text you want. Or HTML, so it can be a GIF, an animated GIF loader, whatever you want but different HTML or text can be popped into this span tag at any given point that we want. Now let's move along to quickly discussing this JavaScript which the JavaScript is going to have a function called check user name that's going to execute in the on blur event of this text field. So let's look at that code. Now what we have here is an Ajax post to PHP. If you want to understand how this is working I don't want to waste anybody's time by doing redundant material. So I developed PHP.com two months ago, which I'm working on updating developphp.com. If anybody's uh, curious, I've got 
uh, new design changes. I'm updating all of the data there and I'm going to start adding a lot more material to developphp.com in about two weeks. You're going to see a new design, new navigation system. When you start getting into the lessons here, there's going to be a new navigation system on the left. But back to the point right here Ajax posts a PHP file with the HTTP request. That's Ajax. So I explained it fully in this tutorial and this is a video tutorial that you can watch and what that will do is tell you exactly how this code is working right here because that's the exact code I'm using. Alright so now you know the JavaScript now let's discuss the PHP and I will explain that because that's not in any other lessons yet. The First thing we're doing in the PHP is we set an if condition which you can see it nests at the top and the bottom of the script so everything here all this highlighted code right here is within that if condition nest and the if condition states if is set the posted variable name to check and that's the posted variables coming from your JavaScript Ajax post remember right here you see the little variable called name to check it's sending the username to that to the PHP it's posting name to check right there and there's a second condition here that says and we want to make sure the posted variable name to check is not equal to nothing because if there's nothing in the field or if they've typed nothing in then we really don't want this script to even execute okay so if those two conditions meet okay and everything is honky dory then we move along to all the code within that if conditions nest first thing you want to do is include once your or require once your connect to mysql.php file or if you just want to sync your mysql connection lines directly in here you can do that but I like using a connect to mysql file for any time that I need to connect to my database in any of my scripts so basically you just connect to your database here whichever way you prefer to do it then we gather up the username that they're trying to type in that we want to check you can acquire the posted variable right there and we run it through a preg replace function filtering out unwanted characters so we're filtering out everything but lowercase and uppercase a through z and numbers 0 through 9 so we're filtering out spaces anything that's not a letter or a number is getting filtered out of this variable by using preg replace on the posted variable then that gets stored in a local PHP variable called username then we run a MySQL query which is going to be sunk into this SQL uname check variable. The MySQL query reads select ID from user table, whatever your members table is named, you put right there, where username field within that table is equal to the username that this guy's trying to type in. Limit one. So if you're selecting and you find that username is already in there, then you know that you can tell them it's already taken and how you do that is you can check the MySQL num rows on that query and that number is placed into this uname check variable and we do the uname check on that variable right down here but first before we check that variable we want to check if the string length to see if it's greater than or less than four rather so if it's less than four characters we want to tell them four to twenty characters please or four to fifteen characters please and you can also check if the string length is greater than 15 you can also exit the script if you want but JavaScript and the HTML should be taking care of that for you by limiting the text field now the next condition is the one where remember in the demo I was showing you that it won't allow them to put a number as their first character of their username that's how we're doing this right here we're using the is numeric function of PHP to check the user's names first letter the method I used to get the first letter was very simple. Each string is really just an array of characters. It's an array of text. You can take that first character out of that string of text just by claiming the zero index of that array. Now finally, the last little bit, and then we're done, is if the username check variable, which is a number here that's being created by the MySQL num rows function, if that number is less than one, that means the username is okay for them to have because it wasn't found in the database. Else, if that number is 1, 
that means that it was found and they can't have it so you tell them that name is taken so you gotta try something else and that is the whole script my friends there's your PHP there is your JavaScript and there's your simple HTML and this can be used for all kind of other things not just checking username you know you can check all kind of different stuff and use many different events you don't have to use the event method of on blur you can use on change on mouse over on mouse out all of those different events exist and they can fire off JavaScript functions at any time you want oh, I'm gonna have a link to where you can get this script copy and paste this script in the videos description area and it might be on world of webcraft temporarily while I fix up developphp.com